questions? Well, so should I resume no, no. the physics part? So, um, well, uh, um, so basically the leak also ABs uh, library results from the Dutch and the ABs result from OpenBSC. It was first released in this uh, last August. And basically that library contains input drivers like the ISDN um, cards that we support that are the Dali card and the MISDN card. Uh, also the uh, Ethernet uh, based um, infrastructure for IP access and the HSL Femto. Um, the code was generalized to support both BTS, BSC modes thinking on um, Osmo BTS. And also um, we extracted part of the code, well, all the code that was inside ES11 config to add some RS um, 252 uh, layer, which is not very flexible and it depends a lot of the S11 steel, but so it's not generic. And well, what else there is in that library? Um, there is the LabD code for ISDN ABs um, that depends on Jolly's uh, LabD generic code, which is in the flipped Osmo core. And there is also generic uh, EPA functions, um, proxy functions for EPA traffic. And some uh, RTP code for Osmo BTS as well. So just uh, who, for those who don't know what IP what IPA functions are, they are not Indian Pale Ale, but they are uh, IP access multiplex, uh, uh, basically. So IP access has this multiplex protocol. Now they can handle different streams in one TCP connection, and that's uh, some kind of function. Mm. Yes, TCP connection. Yeah. Yeah. IP access TCP always uses TCP for signaling. <coughs> well, no, <too. laughs> even, even though they have a multiplex uh, which allows them to send multiple streams inside a single TCP connection, they still make two TCP connections, okay. which, each, which each has one stream inside a multiplex that could handle multiple streams. At the beginning it was UDP based. Yeah, I was just wondering why, why they use uh, TCP because? Well, because you have lossy links. Yeah, but you need to be also. Yeah, exactly. You have to make <laughs> TCP. You can just use. You don't have to make. So, but continuing. Um, well, uh, what what Osmo bits contain basically is um, well initially uh, this code was designed for to support BS eleven. Right, so it contains an E1 line uh, fraction and then uh, support for Ethernet based BTS were, uh, was, was added to that API. So even if those structures look like E1, you can also get an instance of um, one Ethernet uh, line using it. So the main objects that you can find in the library are those three. It's the E1 input driver that defines the input driver. There is, for example, the um, uh, IP access input driver, the DADI input driver, the MSM ISDN input driver, and so on. And then the, um, the E1 input line, which is an instance, an, an, an instance of uh, a line, and it basically uh, creates that instance base of the um, definition of, that is available in the driver. And then there is another object that is quite important because it allows us to route the, the signaling messages with the E1 input SIP link. And that object um, is attached to the message buffer. So it is passed to the AB's OML RSL layer, which is available in the open ESE. So basically the idea, um, after having done this way, the idea for the new library lib of Monetif is to, pro um, to provide a, a generic library for networking in general, not only focus on the ABS interface. There are plenty of um, uh, code in the Osmocom project that requires, for example, opening a socket or um, sending some information over some sort of, inter of interface and instead of uh, replicating that code over and over again, for example, 
Holga shows showed um, just 10, 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes ago that he was uh, defining some UDP socket layer in the cell manager in the next generation. But it, instead of uh, defining and implementing that that code over and over again, the point is to provide a flexible API that can be extended easily without uh, breaking backward compatibility and the AB, the binary interface and also provide signaling and voice uh, interface abstraction. So, um, well basically now there is uh, some code in OpenBSC that is stick to the output input driver, for example, there is, uh, specifically there is code in the um, Osmo uh, BSC um, uh, demo that um, requires communicating with the MSC using the using UDP. So if we can change that to to uh, make it configurable so you can in runtime or in configuration time select what channel you want to use to, to, to communicate with the MSC, it could be good time in handy. Yeah. Well, um, maybe to, to, I mean, that's sort of what it has evolved to, but the initial, um, the initial reason really was that uh, right now we have, even though we have libosmo abis as a library to access the various different abis uh, types uh, of links um, still as a user it, like openbsc there's still a lot of difference in the api whether you use an ip based abis link or an e1 based abis link and uh, the idea of libosmo native is to have completely no difference at all uh, from a bsc point of view or even from a bts point of view what kind of physical uh, bearer you use for carrying abis so that means that, that, that all the, um, uh, that's what he said, uh, what Pablo said with regard to voice, that all the RTP uh, versus trial frames um, uh, in, in the user plane, um, because either we send RTP, uh, codec messages in RTP streams or we have the, the transcoder frames over E1. So those two need to be handled transparently and generated and received by the library as well as of course all the signaling messages in an, in an independent way. Um, and, and if we have that, then of course also we can, we can do other uh, interfaces. And the same should apply to the A interface. So, because signaling over ABIS uses a completely different protocol stock than signaling over A. But also there, the, the BSC should not care whether it's an A over IP link or an A over A1 <coughs> link. It should just be, you know, it should just open an A link and the remaining part comes from some BTY configuration file stuff uh, uh, to define what exactly uh, is, is the physical data. Exactly, yeah. So, well, basically the features of the of Monetive are the generic AP, API for basic communication, uh, currently support TCP, UDP, uh, DADI, MSDN, I have to do, well, DADI, I'm working on it, now that I got the card, and MSDN, I don't have the card, but I get it, so I, I support it. And also RS-252, uh, uh, there is also there is still some code in the Osmo core from Sylvan, so I have to, to talk to, to him to see how how we can um, manage to to get those codes match and and then um, they, there is there, there there are generic transport protocols uh, like uh, LAPT and basic proxy for RTP. There is the concept of channels. And this is the name that I I selected it is. Um, so based based on previous layers, uh, based on the generic uh, basic communication, you can uh, define, you can implement a abstraction in, uh, and create um, AB's AB channel, um, which is uh, based on uh, the IP access dialect, or uh, implement a channel that will use some um, of the ISDN. Um, ISDN um, uh, uh, cards. Uh, uh, the idea is to allow proxying between different uh, channels, so you can proxy traffic coming from, as Harald said, coming from one E1 line and going to one Ethernet uh, line and making it transparent. So um, OpenBSC will not uh, will not care if it's going through one E1 line or one interface line. Allow to configure um, the channels in runtime, and also the API, the API is, is designed in a way that it allows adding new features 
without breaking the ABI. And I'll show you an example. So basically, so you need to increase the concentration. Yeah. Is that fine? You need to do alt enter and alt enter again because otherwise the window will not notice uh, the change in size. Yeah. So basically, you create um, the channel and you specify what type of channel you have to implement your own channel. You specify the channel that you want to create, and then um, you can set a specific uh, configurations parameter or parameters of that channel. In this case, for the IPA server, you set the um, signal message callback, and also you can register the uh, IP access PTS unit. Yes. Can you please have a much shorter function name? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's but then you don't need any documentation. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I love long, long function names. Maybe not that long, but. <laughs> <laughs> but probably the the blood come from. And but that, 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 that's why I, I also love editors with after um, competition. 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 Yeah, competition. Yeah, so then um, once you have created the channel, this is the, the only part that remains specific of every channel. So this part will go in the configuration part of OpenBSC or whatever code in the, in the BTY interface. And then the, um, um, you open the channel and once it's open, you just uh, receive the messages through the callback. Um, and that's it. So the point is that the specific parts of the um, of the channel remain in the BTY code, and the remaining part of the BSC code just use the uh, functions to send and receive messages from the channel. Uh, why is the callback function dependent on the channel type? Sorry. Why is the setting the callback function dependent on the channel type? That exists for pretty much all channels. Yeah, well, you you've got plenty of well, you will have a configuration a specific configuration options. If you see the channel, you create the channel, which is this is generic for all the channels, and then there are specific functions for for each channel. Yeah, but so. the, that's what Sylvan says is basically the the signal message callback, the callback prototype should be the same for for. No, 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 no. You should. That's what. Well, <laughs> But I, I made it in a way that um, it, 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 kind of, it, it, it doesn't have to, to be the same. So it, it's, uh, it, well, it, it will look the same, but if you find some, um, if, you, if, you require to, if you need to change it, if you, if you need a different prototype, you can, um, this, this function is a specific, well, I, I, could, I could add some, some very function to register the the scenario callback for all of them, and um, if we need some change, some specific change in any of the of the channels, we can change that um, well, that then, callback. Then add a void star to the signal message callback prototype or something like that, where where, the, where a channel specific structure could be passed uh, through to the callback. But I think uh, I agree with Sylvain that. Uh, the point is uh, that you don't, I mean, you should have an, a callback function for receiving signaling messages that is independent of the, the, the physical layer. Yeah, actually, it is, yeah, that, that, that is the way, yeah, that's, that's fine. Mm. Of course, the unit ID is IPX <laughs> specific, so it is an IPX specific function. There is no, yeah. no question about that. Yeah. But, but uh, because uh, typically setting the unit ID uh, typically come from the, the configuration, the VTI configuration, stuff like that, so it's definitely specific and <coughs> specific. Yeah, things like the callback function, they're going to be hard to put it in the code, so mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to specify in the VTI. 
definitely put my function should be. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that will be specified in a different part of the goal you're right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I made that you Okay. Okay, that's it. I'm going to show you also some basically <coughs> attendant the prototypes can be. So, um, so far there is only one channel. Um, the channels uh, support a couple of flags, so you can um, make different handling of errors. Uh, also, if you want to batch messages, you can enable that in the in the channel, and you get uh, messages. Uh, well, the code would would try to batch messages to try to, to put it in one single bucket. Um, if you enable it, and also there is a couple of well, the Osmo Chan type is the 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 functions that the channel have uh, uh, the channels have to implement, and then. The operations that they have to implement, and then you have the basic uh, functions that are create, destroy, open, close, and in queue to send uh, messages over that channel. You receive the messages over through the callback, so that that's, that is why there is no Osmo Chan at the queue. And Also, I'm providing um, the gram screen. For example, I'm providing well the name, the name of the function is very long. Uh, we discuss. I will provide. I provide uh, generic um, generic functions for to uh, create the string sockets. And basically, the idea is to you create, destroy the objects, and then you set the parameters and. You've got lots of setter and getters, and then you can open or close it. Also, it supports uh, runtime reconfiguration. So if you configure the if you if you change any of the configuration parameters, then you go open again. It, it will automatically reconfigure the reconfigure the the, the link, um, and then you've got this is for the server side and this is for the client side. You see this like all the objects are defined um, using OPAC um, uh, fields, so attributes are not available, and you have you are forced to use the you know, this this set this setter interface. So if we need some, uh, it's it's if you see it's made in a way that <coughs> if we, we need some new feature for something uh, we only need to add the setter and since the binary layout remains uh, hidden um, we don't break uh, the, the binary in the place. So I'll show you this one well, this is for the RS uh, uh, 252 is like the same thing create um, then you set the configuration parameters, you open and also read write. It, this is the way it looks for all, if I show you for the datagram. Similar, create and destroy, set parameters, open, close, and send and receive. Well, in this case, there is no receive because you receive it uh, via callback function. Um, but wouldn't it make sense? I mean, um, to have, uh, I mean, we still have specific functions for for datagram for stream and so on. I mean, uh, why not have the same interface and and hide? So when you open a channel, you say, I want to have a datagram or a stream. Uh, that's what you do in the channel, I think. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So did you use like lower level yeah, this is a lower level. So you can use these functions to build the channels. Okay. So that's the idea. Just if you want to implement some APIs over UDP, just implement the channel and use this function. So, 
Is there already a structure yeah. defined with the operator? Yeah. I didn't see, did you uh, define and export the structure with all the operation directly? Uh, that was in the in the channel that I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, the create, destroy, open, close, and keep. Yeah, yeah, I see, but uh, you could. Uh, oh, uh, so uh, every channel have have to define um, those uh, operations: create, destroy, open, close, and queue. And um, this is the the basic functions to create, destroy channels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought uh, I was thinking so so that you didn't have to. Um, what you want to create ABs over UDP? Yeah, you have to define a new channel. Yeah, you have to define a new channel that the, the interface, the, the library doesn't predefine it for you. Yeah. Uh, it defines the operation, but you have to, uh, yeah, you to, have to assign each uh, yes. function manually to each. Uh, exactly. Each yeah. Program, yeah. Exactly. And that that way, that way, you only have to change if you want to make it. Um, you. I show you. Then if you if you at some point you need another callback and you add it uh, the Osmo uh, datagram and you add the, the function for that new callback, you just modify all the application that use that datagram to so that they assign this callback as well. While if you dis if you define the uh, Osmo datagram uh, operations yeah. that contains all of them at once, you can when you <coughs> want to get uh, ABs over Program, you can just assign one thing, which is a complete structure that has all the function pointers directly. I think Pablo meant that if you want to create an ABS over UDP, you put that structure in the library, right? That was your idea. Not not that the application would have to create this this. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's, that's it. You put you put it you put it in the library, so all like all those can reuse it. Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Um, so the idea is that um, if you want to use a different interface, you only have to change this and the specific configuration options go to the BDY. Yeah, but... Um, <coughs> so, <coughs> things like setting the IP address and all that, um, you would automatically create some BTY uh, uh, from within the library for that, or how do you think... Uh, no, not yet. There is no not implemented uh, BTY well, that, could be, that could be added. Well, because so the China's already can provide a bit of white code, yes. Um, because it would be more or less the same, you know, if for multiple different applications. Mm -hmm. And this is how I have done it in the uh, libosmo, the, 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 for NS and BSS GP, that, that part for, for Riga S. Um, where also I think the login code is the same in libosmo for. So we have the login code. But then also, if you if an application wants to use the VTY, it can call one more function, and this function will register all the VTY commands related to logging. Um, and uh, they are also, it may, might be good if you just can set a flag or some additional function where you say, I want to have all the settings for this channel. Uh, the library should take care of exporting them in the VTY. And yeah. also take care, then take care of if the VTY, somebody changes the, let's say, destination IP address, then it should change that internally and reconnect and, and do, do that logic. That's fine. I, I, I'll add support for the VTY in place. Um, also, there is something else. Um, what else? I was going to tell anything else. I forgot. In this example right now, how would you set, when, okay, it's a server, you don't have the client code yet, but even on a server, I mean, you, how would you, for example, tell it to bind to a specific IP address? Yes, something? I think there is, there is, um, yeah, there is a way to do that. Yes, there is already functions for this. So this, these are the specific functions for, for the uh, ABs, uh, IPA channel. So you create the channel, and then you you've got the, the specific configuration options <coughs> options for uh, functions for the function for that channel. But and <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. Um, I mean, but I think the layering is 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 wrong in this case because. I mean, you have a, sp a function name that's specific to the IPA server code, yeah. but in reality you're setting an IP-related parameter, and that parameter will exist for all other channel types that also use IP. 
So if you have an IPA client, you would have the same functions, but with a client inside in the function name. Yeah, but the idea, the idea is exactly the, the idea is to put um, <coughs> as many details in the upper layers than in the lower layers. So the idea is not it is try not to leak, try, try not to make assumptions on in the lower layers. It's try to put uh, details in the upper layers. So I prefer I prefer assuming that. Um, you can set the a the a the API address in the um, in the specific channel, than making it generic and adding that to the channel. So the idea is to, to make a very my idea was to make very uh, small as a lower layer abstraction, and then trying to put most of the details in the upper layers. Yeah, but that means that there is a lot of channel type specific code in the application, which is exactly what I thought we would want to avoid. Um, because now the application has to call different functions depending on what channel type it opens, and that's. Uh, but that we go in the in the BTY code anyway, so. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm with Laurent uh, on this. I think uh, you would need something like uh, maybe two abstraction layer where you have the the channel type that you want to create, and then the transport in which it runs, and then you have transport specific. Uh, comment where you can say, okay, if, if you're in TCP, whatever the channel type is, you, you have a, a code to your IP and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and those, the okay, application so shouldn't even call them directly, but uh, they should be called by VTI code automatically added by the... Okay, so yeah, it could be that some parameter for the channel that would say what is the type of the lower, of, of the lower level of, of the lower la layer interface, so say that something like yeah, something like yeah. But B, you have you have something that says okay, this is A B, and this has some uh, yeah, characteristics, and then you have the transport of all of the yeah, say the say yeah, something like this is UDP or this is TCP. Yes. And so you yeah. Can anything on anything. So I can I can add generic yeah generic functions for for that yeah that's fine that's fine I like that idea yeah. Um, yeah, in any case, I think it's getting into a lot of details and uh, we are already behind a bit on schedule, so um, I think, uh, yeah, we can just, I mean, the code is already in Git for some time, right? So I, I, I would just like to, everyone who has an interest in this, to just make some comments and send it to the mailing list or something like that. Um, if it, uh, so, I mean, we have a couple of points that we already identified, like the function names and the, the the level of API, the VTY <coughs> integration, so I think there's already quite a number of, um, of uh, requests. Um, but if anyone has more uh, suggestions or wants to play around with it, I mean, it, you can just compile it right now, right, and work with the examples. So yes. Yeah, anyone can just um, yes, the help to, to, to shape it in, in the way it's... Uh, yeah, most all the examples are for the lower layer interface. And also, there is only one channel, and once I finish with the, there is a patch for the DALI interface that I have to test. <coughs> also, I wanted to, yeah, I remember that what I wanted to say. I want to, I like to add the generic uh, the, the statistics for the interfaces yes. here. So, all the UDP, TCP, DALI interfaces get um, statistics about uh, yeah. problems, errors. And Yes, that, that definitely uh, is a good idea, which then also can again be exported by the, uh, the, or uh, inspected with using the VTY, so we mm -hmm. just have a show, link, blah, blah, statistics. Yeah. Um, the, um, what's something else? Ah, yes, I mean, I assume you already did that, but just as a, as a comment, but uh, I mean, there shouldn't be IP addresses anywhere. Um, it should always be host names or uh, strings with addresses that then use <coughs> inet uh, um, you know the get adder info um, because I think it took us quite some time to get IPv6 uh, into Levosmo 4 and I think if we start something new then yes it should always yeah. be you know, uh, address family independent so. yeah it's following the same thing that we are doing with Levosmo 4 and the generic software layer that, yeah. that you added yes. Good. Then, okay. I'd like to quickly, yeah. Um, oh, I mean, 
Am I mistaken? <coughs> it was supposed to be until 11.30? Yes, okay, sometimes. Okay, yeah, I, I'd like to quickly, I mean, I, I, I can squeeze it in, in less time than, than we originally scheduled, uh, talk a bit about uh, Mobis. Um, actually, now, question is, do I still have a Mobis Wireshark here? Yeah, I mean. Um, Thank you. 